Assalamualaikum. Good afternoon. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. We'll wait until uh, 3 p.m. to start, yeah? So just we wait until everybody's here and then at 3 p.m. we are going to start. Thank you. Aku ajar mana bang?
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for today's webinar. First of all, I would like to uh, say thanks to Prof. Dr. Noor Azia, Diti Alias for being here today. Um, we are really grateful for your uh, being here with us in the SM, in the SM, but in the virtual environment. Okay, so um, to this webinar will be, the title will be Embracing Technology in Open Distance Learning, ODL, a minimalist approach to designing meaningful learning experience. First of all, I would like you all to, when whenever uh, you, uh, you are listening to us, please mute your microphone, okay? So I can see a few of us is still have, are still having the uh, microphone unmute. Please, please make sure that you mute your microphone before we start. And please also, if you have any question, uh, please type in the chat box and uh, we are going to look at it uh, afterwards, yeah? All right. So... For this session, uh, we will look at how we embrace technology in our ODL, Open Distance Learning Delivery, and how apt is the approach we are taking, considering the students' readiness, access to the internet and learning environment. Because of the pandemic, we have resorted to technology to help us deliver, and after a year, it is already a year, yeah? Many of us are, are still balancing the wonders of technology and the students' ability to connect. Okay. So uh, before we start, allow me to briefly introduce our speaker today, who is going to share her experience in managing a large university ODL and her own groups of students. Okay. So Dr. No Azia Alias. Professor Dr. No Azia Alias is a professor of teaching and learning at University Technology Mara UITM. She is currently under the Academic Affair, Affairs Division UITM. Prior to this, she held the post as the Director of the Academic Development. She was also the Director of e-learning from 2012 to 2014 and the Deputy Dean's Academy of UITM Faculty of Education. Uh, she holds a doctoral degree in the field of instructional technology. So, Prof. No Azia has been involved in several MOHIS projects and initiatives. Her involvement in the Orange Book Differentiated Career Pathway Agenda come up about when she was initially sought to share UITM's experience in implementing the three tracks in 2011. Prof. Dr. No Azia's most recent accolade is the EdTech Leadership in Asia for Tertiary Education awarded during the EduTech Asia 2019, which is the Asia's largest education conference and exhibition held in Singapore November last year. So let us not waste any more time. Hello, academics. I present Prof. Dr. Noor Azia Alias. Prof, the floor is yours. Thank you, Prof. Azida. Um, thank you for having me here this morning. Eh, sorry, this afternoon. Um, let me. How long do I have actually? Around one hour, Prof. Okay. So I'm going to share my. Right. All right. Um, okay, I think uh, everyone can see that. Right. Yes. Okay. Clear. Yeah. 
Um, okay, again, uh, my name is Nur Azia, like uh, Pro Azia said, I'm currently at the office of the Deputy Vice Chancellor. Thank you for this opportunity. Actually, I was just telling Prof Karim, um, I'm, I'm glad that people are talking about minimalist approach when I saw Dr. Rosmaliza's uh, session. And, you know, Prof Karim, he took the opportunity and said, hey, why don't you just uh, share what I did in June last year? So basically, this is uh, something that I've done in uh, UITM in June. And uh, hopefully that today we can, you know, um, and let me just share with you, people in USM. Uh, even though we are already like one one year going into this, like I said, I think we still have a lot of things. I Every day I'm learning new things when it comes to the de delivery of uh, UDL. Right? Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, before that, let me just backtrack a bit. In 1997, 1998, I, I have my own ODL story uh, because I took this graduate certificate in open and distance learning with the University of Southern Queensland way back in 1997. And there wasn't any uh, videos, no Zoom, no Meet, no Webex, nothing. It was all text. But um, I had fun. I I uh, I learned a lot, and I think the main thing that um, that the delivery is not so much of the delivery, but it was about the content and the lecture. So that is something that I learned when it comes to people learning at a distance. So um, with that, uh, we went into a lot of uh, stuff in UITM as well. You know, e-learning and distance learning. So in this particular uh, session, I hope to basically share my experience. So it's not going to be something like, wow, or, you know, um, how do I say with fireworks, whatever. It may be something that you say, oh, yes, I am also doing that. But I hope this one hour session is, uh, is a session where I can just uh, pick up on certain things that we normally take for granted, but hopefully, this is something that we can focus when we have to do more remote teaching and ODL because as you can see, we are still, in fact, we are basically worse than we were before, okay? Um, anyway, you know, and, and then we are gonna talk about minimalism and about designing the ODL experience and we go into technology a bit, not a bit, we are going to go into technology. I love technology, uh, please do not, um, uh, misinterpret the fact that when we say technology minimalism, we want to minimize. No, I love technology. I love every aspect of technology, but there are lots of things that we have to consider as well. Okay, so after a year, like I said, here we go again. So, lo primero, as lo primero means first things first. We got to ask a few questions. Are we doing the right thing after a year? Are we doing things right? Are you satisfied with the way um, you deliver, are you satisfied with the way you teach the students? Maybe for USM, you have uh, PJJ, uh, you have the Center for PJJ in distance learning, and you are um, much better than some universities in terms of um, delivering at, uh, online or open. Yeah? But uh, for many people, it's something really new. So we were grappling with, you know, the anak nak belajar, mak pun nak kerja, and then that kind of thing. So we we need to kind of pause a bit. So in UITM, what we did was we we collect data all the way, all through our journey. So we call it a journey for the past year. When when the um, when the news came about PKP and so on, uh, MCO and so on, we started with uh, an, a survey on readiness for online learning. We did it with about sixty thousand students. We found that uh, a certain percentage were basically ready. Then we went into um, ODL, we, we gauged the participation. We got 97% participation. Um, every time the, the faculties will report that. And then we noticed that some students cannot, couldn't participate because of uh, issues of uh, connection and so on. We developed a system we call student signal search. So we can actually check each student's signal whether they get LTE or you know 4G or whatever, so we we know which students are actually having problem, uh, and then we gauge their ODL experience sometimes in May at the end of May, 
we we went we went into what we call teaching self evaluation for lecturers because lecturers for most of them for the first time uh, are teaching uh, ODL so we get them to self evaluate. We also get students to uh, feedback online. Then we went for ODL award nomination. We got three thousand two hundred seventy five nominations from the students. Three thousand two hundred seventy five students actually log in into the nomination. Uh, website to nominate their lecturers. We survey the dean's list re recipient, and it is in December we actually look at uh, the whole, the final year student learning experience and see how things uh, work out. Okay, so so that's why we we reflected a lot. Uh, I reflected throughout the year. In fact, just now my PSCA was asking me even. As students are coming in this year, we still got a lot of problems when it comes to, you know, uh, trying to settle with the students' um, course, their requirement, and so on. At the same time, we got the pandemic still going on. So when we ask for readiness for online learning, actually, students about sixty four percent were ready, or for online, right? So about thirty six percent were not really ready in March last year. So when we asked about their experience, so at the end of the year, uh, in May, we got about 65% saying positive experience, right? And I, I, I have this, 14% in May and also in December, 14%, same percentage. Students surveyed are still grappling with ODL. So they have problems with uh, connection, they have problems with learning uh, environment, not non-conducive, and then they have problems with assessments and the tasks that lecturers are giving them. So we 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 still we are still gauging all this and we make decisions basically on all this data. Hopefully we do better for the coming one. So let's let's look at some of the things that the students are telling. This was in May last year um, may or june last year right so we i got one of my students to use pixton to just you know talk about issues look at what the students are saying here let me try to see uh you know i'm just gonna skip the class it's not like i focus during it even and learn anything i still gonna read the slides nonetheless right if there's an, any upcoming test and I'll tell you later in the day that I had back reception. She definitely will bite. See, the students <laughs> were actually thinking of us that way. Yeah, of course, uh, the, in the end, uh, he's kind of got Mr. Love. And then we, never mind. But that was in May. So, so when we had that Google Meet with 40 students, I'm, yeah, are you sure that all of them are following? Unless you are doing very interactive thing online, right? Okay. Now, um, in December, I asked them to do this again, not in December, I think in October. So I see a different, a, a, a slight shift among the students. Look at what this girl is putting in her, her, tattoo, her strip, her comic strip. Her asking about, Are you, you look stressed, sorry. You look a bit stressed. And then uh, the friend is saying, uh, sorry, uh, the friend is saying, um, you also need to arrange your sleep time because this is very important. And then uh, she said, maybe I got it. I go, oh, I got it. Maybe I need to put an important note. So the, the, the idea of their helping each other is there now. So we are better off lah. Hopefully, yeah. So we are better now, inshallah. So when we ask the student in that survey that I showed just now, um, these are the things that they were saying, non-conducive learning environment. This is actually very sad in fact because some of the students are living with uh, 12 others in the house in a small apartment couldn't really learn or study or do their assignments they have only the bed where they from they learn they, they do their tasks they do they do assignments and so on and uh, lecturers forget they forgot about students taking seven courses so they give a lot of tasks a lot of assignments because they don't see the students, they feel like I have to give them class every day, even on weekends. So students were complaining about that. Of course, internet connectivity, platforms and tools used by lecturers, 
uh, Prof Azia using this, another lecturer using that, another lecturer using that. Students will say, I need to uh, delete one app to upload another app because another lecturer will use another app. So we were we were uh, assuming students have uh, you know the latest gadget so that they can use any apps that we are using, but that's not true. Some of them have very you know how do I say not up to uh, even the computer, the laptop is not the latest and so on. So it's it's kind of sad when you look at some of the comments, right? So there's isolation, fear, great anxiety. They have the lack of the skills, of course. And one thing that we that we did not um, we didn't think much at the beginning was that it's very difficult for them to reach out and cooperate with the peers. So we tend to give group work, and students were having difficult time uh, doing group works because friends just shut off and not contribute. One of them said, "Saya penat sangat because she's been doing all the uh, all the tasks and so on, right?" But we also got something like this. Please do full on class online exam starting next semester, as uh, the, with the current situation, COVID has taken our freedom, whatever. So that we also got things like that. So with hundred and sixty thousand students, we have students don't want to come to campus. Students want to go online. Students don't want to go online and so on, right? So uh, even lecturers, when we ask them the issues from lecturers, uh, also saying about non conducive home environment that was then in May because we were all stuck in at home. And uh, the thing is, uh, the rules set by management that's not, uh, that was not flexible. The faculty said you must teach from 8 to 10 every day. That's your schedule. And this lady has five young kids. She, needs to be, she needed to prepare breakfast and so on. So there was a lot of, you know, um, uh, issues as well among the lecturers. Uh, of course, the platforms and tools to be learned. Uh, we also got we 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 have lecturers uh, who actually at the point of you know uh, depressed because too many things to do and so on. So same thing about the same thing with the lecturers. Uh, I'm just sharing some of the things we found out. So of course, from the management, they were said. Um, work from home willpower and accountability is something that we are questioning um respond time uh, boss bagi pagi tadi tapi sampai malam tak bisa kita no respond that kind of thing and actually some of us are uh, uh, experiencing a lot more work when we work from home right uh, than at the office right okay so um with all this what we did was um we look at odl and we said Okay, we are, we're doing O, D, L. So many people were interpreting, still, most people are still interpreting O as online. But actually, O is open. We are, we're not pushing for everything to be online because we know some of the students, you know, all those pictures of students climbing uh, trees and so on. We have students climbing tanki air, going into ladang to get, you know, uh, Wi-Fi and so on. So the O is not is not just online. So we stop to pause and think what is the O and we should be designing according to the O. So when we look at distance learning, just a just a very uh, quick run through, we actually start with um uh, mail in seventeen twenty eight. Last year, some some of us actually packed the uh thumb drive and but uh, uh, learning materials, put it into envelope and mail it because some of our students couldn't get any of the uh, uh, the internet connection or whatever. So you must uh, remember that your ITM, we've got students in Sarawak, Sabah, some kampung that you've never heard of, right? And then uh, we were trying to get radio, but I think uh, PPT did not manage to get radio as well. TV would be a good. Uh, a good platform actually so but we are in UITM we've been using online and self-instructional materials in 1998 actually right and we do blended learning since uh, 2009 and 2014 we also started with MOOC so picking up from 2014 we put in a lot of elements in our uh, our uh, curriculum in our courses We've got all these things, uh, we call it Education 5.0, we've got flexible delivery policy, 
we've got WIC without walls, we've got a new, a new platform uh, launch, we've got what we call Wisdom Wednesday, more flexible and so on. And then COVID came in 2020. So we thought, hey, not so bad, lah. we are ready, right? We've been doing this since 1998, but that is not so. Uh, some of us, some of the uh, instructors were like, they were so panicky because uh, they've never done any of this before. Whereas uh, it's basically been there since um, like 10 years, 20 years, 10 years, oh, 20 years, right? Anyway, this is what we are at now. See, we are still in March uh, 2020, we shuddered at this number. Now we look at this number, it's like, oh my God, and then we go off, we have to go on with our everyday life. It's, it's something that we are still uh, trying to handle, right? Okay, so basically, I think we all will be doing remote PNL again for next semester, if not for the whole semester, at least part of it, even though KPT is uh, opening up the campuses, but we are bringing students face by face so there will be students at home, there will be students uh, in the campus. So we we'll probably will be doing blender, we'll be doing hybrid and all these things. So we again got to think of the design, the content, the delivery content, probably most of us are already, no problem lah, two semesters we did, we've been, we have all our content, the delivery and the instruction, the assessments and the evaluation and who you know, design the methods, the tools, and the platform into one learning experience for the students to make it something young students, or the students will not say, Saya dah lesu lah, prof. Uh, my students are, some of the students are saying that they're tired, right? Okay, so, so we have to ask. Um, this is the first question that we, we ask, the, we get the, the lecturers in UITM to ask. Face-to-face -face session that we, on, we normally have on campus cannot be transferred as is online. But the first thing most lecturers did was to transfer the three-hour session, the two-hour lecture online. So they had two-hour session, a uh, two-hour lecture, students were sleeping throughout, right? So we, we, we asked them to think about interaction, connectedness, and engagement. And... Uh, we again like i said just now what we want to do is we want to design the experience so if you look if you get if you look at even this uh illustration even people overseas are ha having this right having this problem we don't know nobody is asking you questions some will probably be asleep and so on okay anyway um in, in when when we go into 2020-2021 it is all about design we have to shift from giving instruction to thinking about learning from designing instruction to designing the experience from one approach we used to go into class with our powerpoint and lecture but now we've got to think of many ways of doing things it is more an eclectic design from a very fixed design we used to have what week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, until week 14, and then we are done for the semester. But on when we do ODL, I don't think that one will work. It has to be more flexible. So I'm sorry, that was quite a, <laughs> a, a, a long intro. We all know this. I do not have to go through all, but we should capitalize on a few, like um, enhancing students' independence, interaction and collaboration and this one instructor interaction so we feel like some instructor is the lecturer is away we we don't have that feel but actually it is uh, with technology it can work and technology doesn't mean google meet webex all the time it can be just as simple as a telegram or whatsapp so um that's why with all these issues among students lecturers and so on and connectivity and all we think i think that minimalism should come in meaning what is minimalism uh, not minimizing but minimalist means we focus on a small number of carefully selected and optimized activities that strongly support things you value 
as a lecturer, what do you value? I do not feel like giving content to students is 100% something that I would say, oh, I'm done. That's not it. We value the knowledge that we want to share with them. We value that, you know, that interaction, see how your students uh, think and how they progress in their thinking and so on. So we go for this, a small, carefully selected, optimized activity. Why? Because of all those things just now that I mentioned. Okay, because not all of them have the latest uh, gadget and so on. All right, so after a year, what matters most in ODL and what is required in ODL? Basically, you're going to ask the student. They just need someone who guides and someone who facilitates. They just need you, you know, to be that person they can turn to who will say, hey, you are doing the right thing. Oh, this is not quite right, but let me help you. That's what they want. They want to see the most sophisticated you know, sophisticated technology actually right we all believe in that so let me share with you uh, this is the uh, part of the nominations that i mentioned just now uh, i i choose two yeah sir uh, sir something i won't let put uh, put down the name this is one of the person who was nominated i think he won sir something was passionate about his student's success he went beyond in everything he did the way he taught, the homework assignment, the discussion board he made, the every minute he spent with his student was never annoyed when asked a question. Instead, always re responded with, what a great question. He then answered it to the best of his ability. He did as possible, as much possible, I think, to make law the easiest subject to learn. So, did the student say anything about technology? No, no. Okay, this is another one. Being under her guidance is like you are in that cave. And there is light coming to make everything right, happy, and feel good. Oh, I wish my students would disallow me. You see, that's her, so that's her name under her guidance, her humor, her way of teaching. So students have faith in finishing the semester. So with that in mind, and with the minimalist perspective in mind, we, we want to think of how to make this, uh, the learning, the experience meaningful, right? The word meaningful, I've been trying over many years to, to get what is meaningful among the students. Some of you may have seen this before, but I've done this. I did this every semester and I get this basically the team. Students want you to affirm their competence. Betul, betul, pantai. This is good. That's what they want. Students, they are more driven on effective outcomes that will change them. Okay? When we educate, we seek to change the students in terms of level of knowledge, in terms of their effective um, uh, outcome, even to their skills, right? So that one, they are more driven on effective. They want space, options, and flexibility. They, is more learning is more predicated on the process rather than the end state. Actually, students are saying this. I just don't have much i don't want to put in all the comments from the students and the social learning should come in and of course can be applied i students say this a lot i want to apply it later something like that so i have the idea of minimum this i have the idea of meaningful and i know some of the things that what students want the other guy and the facilitator so we want to go into design I may not be the best person to design. In fact, uh, USM is very, uh, uh, say, uh, what is it? very lucky because I'm very fortunate because we have the best professors in uh, the degree and uh, design, such as uh, Azida herself, Karim, and so on. These are award winners. So I'm just going to share what uh, I do in USM. Okay, so we are telling lecturers. We do a lot here. Um, I hear, I forget. <laughs> I hear, I, uh, you know, we try to get people, students to memorize a lot. Right. So we are trying to get students to do this. I think, I discover, I feel, I value, I share, I gain. So we want students to start thinking and so that they discover a lot of uh, things beyond the textbook and we want them to feel meaning 
after you teach them this actually feeling you know they have this affective thing right and they you want them to share so learning can be anywhere any place anytime any context anybody you can learn from anybody but we are trying to get this right so when we design remote teaching this one i adapt from uh, north carolina state and i put in some of uh, what we do in ytm we want to formulate the instructional time and the student learning time uh, that is from us because uh, let me uh, afterwards i'm going to show you the table because uh, we sometimes we don't think about student learning time the second thing is to generate collaboration this is not easy like i told you many students actually are having problems with collaborating with their friends because they are very far apart so the, the friends sometimes just don't contribute but of course some of you have the latest technology like trello so you can really gauge their collaboration <coughs> and the management of their group work right and feedback and support basically that's what they want they want access to resources they want that support emotional and say keep going you know motivation you're always connected to the students or younger students really said sometimes i send message a message to him i only get blue tick uh, that's the that's the term they use i get blue tick but no response that is not something that we should be doing in remote teaching so we need to build engagement and to embed this is also not easy equity flexibility and choice imagine one student have um, one student they, uh, this student has access to internet another student do, does not have access so you want to come up with an activity that both of them can actually participate and both of them can benefit so we are trying a lot um, in using udl universal design for learning still in the stage of uh kata, try and error and piloting things so but flexible assignment options we are we we ask the like we get the lecturers to think of flexible assignment options and also less rigid deadlines of course okay so this is the minimalist part i hope this will uh this actually help most of you for example the first one you have to keep it simple simple consider learning goals you got what three outcomes that you want to achieve but sometimes with three outcomes we have like what seven assessment why so if you ITM, we tell people if you have four learning outcome you have four assessment to be graded that's all if you have three try to keep it to three we don't want you to have too many simple the second one is to chunk it you need to provide short verse rather than one three hour lecture and our students said die you know uh, so you need to break up this long lecture and then put it into chunk in fact change the lecture into smaller activities so that it improves the retention and engagement i'm sure most of you have done this already uh, remember uh, as i told you i did this in june last year but i have up um, uh, improved a bit on the uh, information here the next one uh, this is not in order eh? uh, we need to organize earlier advanced organizer tell the student okay for this week this is what you have to do imagine the students are they are not in class they are some of them in felda ketengah terengganu some in kampung uh, kuala kuang kuala kaum uh, pahang and so on so they are not in class so they sometimes they get information very how do i say it? Uh, all jumbled up right so we need to clearly do this give them uh, sow is scheme of work give them flow chart mind map of what we are going to do but what we try a lot in uitm is to package the topics into one learning experience using our regular materials and what we already have with, with a little bit of enhancement okay so to do that for example this is what i'm going to show this is our normal uh we need point six courses so some of our students are taking seven courses so we we like to do this now we uh, one lecturer will have lecture discussion synchronous three hour lecture and then ask the students to read uh to do review on the reading and then to put into the discussion as well so uh, i calculate maybe that's about eight hours 
so cost two maybe asynchronous and then ask them to watch and discuss videos your video is only five minutes but in order for the students to discuss and come up with their feedback it took them more than five minutes of course sometimes it took them a lot of hours to just think of the right thing to say in that discussion forum right and of course i'm just playing around with this but i see some of this in um, my university uh, when we started odl one of my lecturers actually had 14 uh, assignments uh, throughout the semester so 14 week 14 assignments by last students actually especially in odl so if you calculate this 10 18 27 34 40 mm, about 48 hours you're assuming students do this 48 hours or 50 hours divide by 5 10 hours a day now. and we are assuming they do things also on saturday and sunday whereas they also need to uh, rest and have time with their family okay so let me just share uh, in your itm after a year we still Find, we found that uh, this is a basic design that most of us are using. Um, many people are flipping. Flip, yeah? uh, they do get the students to do work before class, but this is also sometimes the issue because you give them too much work. right? Uh, and then some are basically just lecture-like kind of thing. Uh, some are doing a lot of active and interactive and some basically we call it empowering the learners give them a project a task that's substantial like that should come in to provide only the guideline and um, feedback lah. so when we look at um, the all these four uh, i went through some of the things that they are doing so we found okay we can do this but we try to calculate the hours for example, if you are going to give them a lot of things at the end uh, after class, try to limit before so that you don't prep time. So that's what we are suggesting to lecturers in YTM. So you can flip maybe substantial tasks to hours, but at the, after that, we do not give them anything so that they have their own division time. And during class, we can have one and a half hour to two hours synchronous, or if you spread over uh, asynchronous you can spread over two hours or you give them just a small video and then uh, in class you spend more time and you can probably give something else at the end so in the end what we do is actually calculating the time the students are expected to spend so then they have time to digest that's what we want them to do digest and actually feel wow yes this is good i can i learn a lot something like that right we don't want the student to say, I, I'm not thinking anymore. I'm just doing assignments as what is expected and I don't know what I'm learning. That's not, that's not what we want. So, for example, interactive session, we can have a very uh, spread over four to five hours, but students need not spend four to five hours. They can come in and out because it's asynchronous, but you can have that. Some of my, my lecturers are doing this with Telegram, lah, eh? okay? So students complete tasks and submit after four to five hours and then they don't they have their own division time so there are a lot more like a mass lecture where students convene in their tutorial group uh, but this is not something that is uh, common in UITM not many people are um, comfortable with mass lecture but now they are I think because now they know they can mass lecture online and then students can break up into different groups and the uh, the lecture can facilitate in smaller groups or you can even set up a learning community okay so when we package uh, the experience this is these are all going to be examples from my class when we started the mco we were at week four or something and so i was thinking how do i do this so what I, I did not follow the week one, week two, week three, week four, week five as stipulated in the uh, course uh, structure. So what I did was I moved week 13. I teach technology, innovative technologies to uh, education students. So I brought week 13 to week four because I want the students to deal with the issues of ODL first. And then I put it together with learning word processing and desktop publishing and some web 2.0 too. 
So what the students did was they use Pixton and then they learn Microsoft Word and then we, uh, I get them to discuss and then they, they, they uh, contribute a flip book. Let me just show you. So they, that's what they, that's what they, this is what they did. They reflect on issues, they build on comic script and then they collaborate. They watch this uh, very four minute video on Masako Wakamiya. If you know her, she, she developed apps at the age of 80 something. So the students um, reflect on Masako in uh, Microsoft Word because they need to, to learn the advanced uh, uh, elements of Microsoft Word. After that, they um, they they develop uh, not they develop they 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 change no, sorry they uh, the Microsoft Word is uh, they develop a uh, a flip book sorry a flip book using Pixnet. So actually. The whole thing with four, five, and six, they didn't realize that actually they're doing with four, five, and six, but because they are all wrapped into one or something that we do, which is basically trying to handle the issues and learning Microsoft Word and learning Flipbook as well. So I, uh, I they have I have a fifty-four page of this of students talking about how COVID impacted higher education and what is his issue from the street and so on. So it's, it's, it's a very simple thing. It, it doesn't take a lot, but I love reading the reflection because I understand what students are going through. Students learn Microsoft Word, students learn Bitnet, students also uh, learn Pixton at the same time. Okay, so another one, um, what I did was to bring in PowerPoint and video Together with open and distance learning, that was the topic, and flip learning and move all together into one. I package it. So what they did was uh, they had to read about open and distance learning using uh, an ebook from the library. So what we did was in that course, we tag it to one competition that the, the library uh, organized. So they they read the ebook on uh, distance learning, they develop the video using either PowerPoint or, or Biteable or whatever that they are familiar with. And they submit for a competition. It's called Amazing Rich, Amazing Reward. So my students did not win, but uh, uh, another group <laughs> from education actually won this particular competition. So they, they were excited because they want to win. So they did not win the competition at the university level, but I gave them the best three. I gave them my own uh, nila, uh, prizes. I gave them prize lah for first, second, and third. So while doing that, they learn how to showcase their their uh, their work. So I get them to interact, to talk about each other's work at the same time, submit for competition. So that, that I mean, packaging it, and then at the end, I get them to follow a MOOC because uh, we don't, I can teach the MOOC. A MOOC is this, this, day. Providers of MOOC is this, this. I can do that. But instead of doing that, I ask them to register for a MOOC and experience the MOOC. So I got something like this from the students. Like, uh, I have completed with one of the MOOC. I love the topic so much. I can agree to certain things. Okay, what I did was I chose a MOOC by Barbara Oakley who had like 3 million learners in her course. And see the students, they, 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 when they experience, they, they find it interesting. I think, inshallah, by from the comments, it was really engaging. I found myself actually learned something. Grateful that you shared. See, that, that's the thing that uh, students come back to you. So uh, I like this actually from one of my students who said, I have a strong feeling you won't assign a staff that will benefit us. So that, that is a quite mature for a semester two student, right? Okay, so when we when I get them to experience the MOOC, if I told them to just go to week one. If you can, go to week two. If you like to complete, complete it. So a number of them actually complete the MOOC, but this particular student completed and actually paid for certification sorry she paid for certification so she got uh, from mcmaster uh, learning how to learn which was a, a certificate and 
a few months after that, she forwarded to me this one. Look, uh, Prof, I studied language, apa ni, the School of Languages and External Affairs from University, I think Spanish. Group. So she has also already completed another one. So what, what I'm trying to say is that students now tend to self-direct from the experience that we designed for her in our class. So is that a lot of, um, uh, you know, sophisticated technology? Not really, right? Okay, so another one, let me just uh, share another one. This is another uh, package where the students have to learn managing learning with technology. So I package it with spreadsheet because they have to calculate the cost of uh, upper, uh, gadgets and so on. And then what I did was I showed them the latest, of course, a uh, few uh, videos on ITM Smart Classroom and so on. And then I send them on a treasure hunt, right? I have this, I put here, non-graded formative kind of thing. That's the assessment, actually. So they explore learning management system, not from my lecture, but by going through an online treasure hunt, solve simple jigsaw puzzle and crossword puzzle. And then we meet on Google Meet, okay, to reiterate what has uh, been learned. Of course, I spend some money, lah, 50 ringgit for the first uh, five who, uh, who who solved the who, who solved the puzzle and came up uh, uh, at the at the uh, at the end of the line lah, yeah? so so actually I spent just a little bit of money and then because we need to, to get the students to learn how to manage this learning with technology I bring in another person called uh, we call it Tito Sazwan online just through whatsapp discussion so teachers are going to spend some time with them so from the uh we saw and crossword puzzle you see i did it again last semester look at what the student said uh, assalamualaikum prof she personally whatsapp me you know telegram eh? alhamdulillah and thanks prof semoga prof dimurahkan rezeki berganda saya boleh bayangkan suasana dalam kelas macam mana if i could help you dah lama saya help prof Okay, Prof dah melamatkan, merapatkan silaturahim antara kita, saya bersyukur sangat. I'm not trying to to say that I am the best, but to see how students react to a very simple thing that I did, which is just basically, you know, what, jom kita buat uh, penipu asuk puzzle. I think most of you are also doing that. But you need to package it into this learning experience that students will remember, insyaAllah. Right, so... Teacher Tazwan, uh, this person is, I don't bring in people who are, you know, um, um, that, uh, very top um, or distinguished professors. I bring people in that's uh, relevant or in the context of what I'm doing with my students. So I was teaching Tesla students. Cikgu Tazwan is an English teacher who uses, she uses game to teach English to orang asli. So I bring him in, they talk to him over about, um, this is basically my my plan. Your task is to talk to Cikgu Sazwan, ask him about technology he uses in teaching English, especially to marginalized learners. So as you see all these points, these are the things that they have to think when they ask the question, uh, when they ask uh, Sazwan the question. So actually, I gave um, them until five. In fact, they, they went beyond five because it's as, uh, asynchronous, right? So, Chazwan, but Chazwan was a very, very good spot. He, he basically uh, answered all the questions throughout. So, um, the students had fun, I think, inshallah. So, they were thanking Chazwan for the sharing. You made me realize how great it is to become a teacher. Good luck, Cikgu, finishing, for, for, uh, finishing your doctoral study. They know Chazwan is uh, doing his PhD. I gain a lot. Thank you so much, Cikgu, for all, uh, for your input. Definitely open my eyes on becoming an educator. So one of them actually thanked me and said, I'm just curious what kind of fun learning activities he use. Who knows I can apply them future on the, in the future and that, and that the future educators might need those as well, right? So, you know, I think um, it's a simple packaging. So when we when I did this again for uh, this year, when I uh, this semester, when I 
I'm teaching visual art student. So I brought in a visual art teacher from Subang Jaya. Remember, uh, Chazwan was from Gua Musang, Kelantan. So orang asli. So he had limited technology in this case. But uh, Irma is from USJ. So did the same thing. So introduce Irma. This time I asked the student to reflect on flip grid. Uh, the other one they just reflected in WhatsApp. So I got the same basically uh, response. I hope I can be like Cikgu Irma one day, inshallah, her effort is endless. Cikgu Irma was so flexible and so on. The interesting thing is, after that, my students were actually sharing TikTok thing because Irma was using TikTok and so on uh, with the friends. So you can see that the students extended the experience the, of what they, they did with Irma into their own uh, group, which is good. Yeah, but of course, lah, I am I'm saying I'm not a TikTok person. I tak mandai, right? So, so that that is the. I I hope I have um I I I'm telling what I'm telling you is that we need to think of the design. That's not that was probably not the best. You probably have a very a more interesting way of packaging your subject. So that that's an uh that is one of the things that we can actually feel good about you know uh, doing this so then we go into technology of course we need technology uh, to help us with this because we are doing uh, okay <laughs> unify kat rumah dah buat perangai okay anyway when we say technological minimalism we want to use first we want to focus on the important activities when we say technological minimalism we want to use minimum level of technology carefully chosen with precise attention to their activities uh, to their uh, advantages and limitations in support of well-defined objectives so basically we want to focus on what it is very essential we want to focus on the purpose of objective and concentrate on what matters most so does that mean we have to use um, google meet all the time no does that mean we have to use the most advanced latest technology all the time? No. It depends on what we want to uh, deliver, that we want, what is the outcome that we expect from our students. So you see, we think about content delivery and assessment. Eh? How do we use technology in ODL? This is just in January 13. Today is the 15. Look at my 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 student. Uh, I it's just flip grid video, two and a half minutes. But pity him, he couldn't get it to, he couldn't upload the video. So he has recorded it, but couldn't upload. So do I need to say, do I say to him, keep doing it, Iqmal, because I want to see your video. I don't need him to, to, to do the video anyway, if, as long as he understands flip, flip grid. So what I did was, I asked him to just type whatever that he has recorded and send me the script and that is the reflection for the class before so sometimes you don't need to go to that extent uh, uh, when students cannot assess the technology sometimes less is more basically so it's more type this reflection sent through telegram and i get to read this reflection okay so when we look at technology in udl i would say of course content you've got this i'm I'm sure all of you got this. You got uh, your videos, you got all your wonderful content because you want students to have access to the content so that they can read, they can comprehend, they can fully summarize, right? The second thing you want to do with technology is for them to use it to synthesize, put the facts together. So some of us are using Padlet so that students can uh, put up what they think, what their summary and so on. Then you want them to create content or ideas. Ideas doesn't have to be three minute video all the time or 10 minute video. Do you know that students actually in my university students complain about all lecturers asking them to buat video. So seven courses, tujuh-tujuh lecturers semua buat video. Penat, it's not easy actually to come up with a, a three, five minute video. So if seven of you are asking, them to do the video can you imagine how how you know how much time they need they need to complete the, that particular task so 
sometimes it's not necessarily video, right? Sometimes it's just text, right? Anyway, um, we need technology to connect. Okay, that is true. We need that platform. Some sometimes we need Google Meet, but not all the time. Sometimes we just need Telegram, but sometimes uh, if, but if we do that for over fourteen weeks, maybe um. After a while, students get a little, you know, unless you can really vary what you do on Telegram. So you got to change the technology. And technology is needed for students to reflect on the content, on the experience, and the, what do they, they discover in your um, uh, course. So when we do this, sometimes you just need simple technology. You teach them instructional design. For example, that's my class. It's just PowerPoint, and then I get them to use a lot of uh, mapping tools because they have to understand the different uh, faces, and then they use they use the same thing for brainstorming as well. They create using the same thing. These are I didn't ask them to do this, but they did, and in the end, uh, they critically analyze. This is basically just a two minute video on Padlet. Very simple. All right. Uh, when it comes to content, let's look at this. Um, this range, this is non-exhaustive, right? So we can start with a simple word document. So you go word doc to PDF, but doc can be doc, uh, Microsoft Word can be very um, effective. Okay, doc to web page, you can use Microsoft Word. Doc to flipbook, I use some of that also. PowerPoint. PowerPoint is wonderful now. You can use PowerPoint to PDF, you can be a web page, you can do the video, you can become a GIF, you can do straight to PowerPoint, PowerPoint actually. You can bring in PowerPoint into PowerPoint. Of course, not many of us doing this, but you can have audio podcast. Sometimes the students, they just need to listen to you. They don't really need uh, all these flashy uh, graphics and so on, especially for some subjects. Yeah? And of course, most of us are doing this, the video podcast, narrated PowerPoint, we do screencast, and we do notes, and we have a lot of uh, internet resources, web 2.0. So it's like um, uh, uh, from the simplest to the most uh, sophisticated or the most advanced technology. So does it always have to be here? No. Think minimal, it can be just here. It can be here, right? So, for example, this is uh, this is something that I did a long time ago, but it's just something that uh, a word, Microsoft Word, and people who have uh, up name, people who have done this, they know that you can actually put in all this. Now, Microsoft Word, you can even play video from Microsoft Word, actually. But some students, they don't have access. So what you do is you send them this, and they can fill in all these uh, uh, questions or writing down issues and so on. We have to do this for people, students who do not have access to internet. So we do that, right? Podcast. Podcast is not too heavy. So you can have many episodes. Episode 1, introduction. Episode 2, uh, your lesson 1, whatever. And of course, when you use PowerPoint, you can do a lot with PowerPoint, but it's good to have uh, things on the PowerPoint that actually let the students know what to do with that slide. Uh, but sometimes we send in our PowerPoint, right? So I, I sometimes I do this for many of the uh, uh, slides that I use. I ask them to watch a video on that PowerPoint, on that slide and then analyze something on Padlet, something like that. Okay? Uh, thank you, Prof. Now you are in. I didn't see you coming in just now. Eh? Anyway, Hi, Prof. <laughs> Hi, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, um, the one thing that we can do with content is that um, this is something UITM at the advantage. Uh, we've got campuses all over Malaysia. Sometimes they're teaching the same course, right? But uh, I don't know, because we sometimes feel like we go to class, we finish off, and then we are done. But actually, we can have a content developed together, and we can even have people teaching cross campus and so on. So now, inshallah, 
we are ha we have what we call garis panduan pengajaran kolaboratif for our UITM lecturers so that they collaborate more on the content as well. So in fact, let's say we are teaching human nutrition, we can bring uh, USM learners as well into the classroom and become become more rich, uh, richer, you know, when it comes to learning. Right. So the second one, the first one is content. Second one is delivery, right? Uh, now people are asking for unlimited access to them. Anyway, <laughs> delivery, accessible, must be accessible, sustainable, active and interactive, of course, engaging. We all know this, right? So sometimes uh, when we started the ODL, people, I know some of my lecture, uh, the lectures in my university, they um, videotape themselves teaching and so on. Some, some of them sampai menangis-nangis because at the end of it, all of it, tengok video, not like what they want. Teruk video, buat lagi. And then run lagi, tak buat hati pun. Sampai menangis-nangis pun ada. Right? Anyway, when we look at delivery, we can start from here. The simplest. We had to do that in your ITM because some of our students can do not have uh, internet access at all. So the lecturers were using SMS. Uh, I know many lecturers from Sarawak and also from Melaka, in fact, who use the phone to just teach the 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 the, the, the student, right? So and then uh, then we can move on, of course, to text-based conferencing, not so heavy. And we can have all the note taking, brainstorming kind of thing. And of course, in the end, we have a parlay. You, we have what we call YouTube teacher, Google Classroom. So again, this is non exhaustive, but uh, like again, not all the time you need to be on Hangout or on Meet, no more Hangout, eh? on Skype. Sometimes it's, it can just be a WhatsApp uh, day for you and your students, or you know, just maybe not be online in the sense that uh, synchronous at all have an asynchronous session in terms of delivery right so i like this um this um what do you call it eh? this particular um framework lah or something like that eh? this matrix matrix this is from oh i can't remember the person but it's from one of the uh, this blog eh? so you see you think of immediacy and you think of accessibility you want an immediate thing and students have that access so you go for video conferencing and audio conference but if students uh, you don't need it to be so you don't need that immediacy you can have asynchronous right or if you have low immediacy and also low bandwidth then we go by this lah email, formal text, reading and so on. So this is, I think, it's a good metric that we can always refer. Immediacy and accessibility in terms of delivery. Okay, I share with you. Uh, this is what I did just now in my class when I bring in Irma and Shazwan. But uh, we do this a lot. I think even in USM, we probably have this now uh, because uh, this particular group, Bachelor of Applied Language Studies, they all can get can be online. So what the lecturer did was to source from uh, lecturers, I don't know, speakers or professors from overseas because this she's teaching intercultural. So in this uh, situation, the technology that she uses is very appropriate. That is having a Google Meet session with Tom Nakayama from university, northeastern, northeastern university, because they need to learn uh, this intercultural communication type kind of thing. So you see what the what Tom said here. It was a pleasure to meet with your student. One of them asked how to get involved. That's why I I I have this slide because I'm so impressed with students wanting to get involved with this global citizen organization. So what we have done is introduce students to just to tom tom was uh i think they had it in at night because tom was in the morning or something like that the us and malaysia right so they they feel they 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 were exposed to tom and now they want to do a little bit more uh 
uh, 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 beyond what they have in class, right? Okay, so the last one is assessment lah. So technology for assessment, we need to make, again, remember essential and relevant. Uh, mostly we do a lot of formative. Okay, so if we look at the, uh, the, the range of technology, we can start with simple things like graphics and pictures or audio and charts or even worksheets. No worry about that, right? And then we can do the quizzing, the Kahoot, Mentimeter, Poll, whatever. Um, most of us are already doing this. We now have online tests, people questioning, able to open it, are we still are grappling with that issue. And of course, we can have portfolios, uh, we can have presentations, and of course, project again. When we look at assessment, you not you need to think whether you're doing a diagnostic or formative evaluation. Is it a feedback thing? Are you getting students to self-assess? This is a good uh, thing that we should introduce to our students to self-assess what they have learned or to bring in authentic assessment. And lastly, summative. Most of us are focusing on summative. So not necessarily when you want students to learn have actually fun when learning right so i i try to picture that students is now with six um apa, uh, six courses ni imagine kita suka bagi kan quiz one test one quiz two test two tak cukup lagi ada final lagi lepas tu oh, we got industry case lab report and uh, some people we have problem set and then we give test we give quiz and no this is quiz not quiz two quiz and then we got term paper then we got video presentation we got final assessment i actually how many of us how many of us teaching the same uh, cohort of students that semester sat down together uh, and look at the blueprint of the assessment so if we don't do this then the students may not suffer right so in, in ITM, now what we do is we 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 limit to four maximum. Actually, some people go beyond lah five or four assessment, but very uh, related to the outcome. Okay. Yes, I like Socrative too. I use Socrative for many many years. <laughs> I saw that chat. Okay. So when we do this um assessment, sometimes it's non graded. Or uh, we do a formative thing and assessment is for learning kind of thing, right? So we can have a lot of things uh, at level one just to recall facts. The three minute video can come in when you want them to put together uh, a knowledge concept or discuss a thing. They can discuss a case, scenario based. Okay, give them a scenario, give them a, a case. Okay, some one of my lecturers asked, eh, boleh guna ke kartu ni for assessment? Like when I said, why not? Because sometimes to build a cartoon script on one topic or one issue needs the student to think quite a lot before they can put it on that kind of cartoon, that kind of something. Because they have to expand. So it can be used. I'm not saying, you know, uh, can I get to, I'm not saying uh, this is the one thing that you that we we do all the time. No, sometimes you vary. So students find it. Every week they want to come to class because oh this week you cannot buat aku pula ya ha you that kind of thing. Alright, so so I'll go back going back to Tahila just now, um the one who completed uh Barbara Oakley's MOOC and then go on to learn apa uh from the Sp uh, Spanish language. I also tag what she's doing to assessment so that some of our students they feel why are we doing all this thing when it is not assessed? So the mode that she followed, she need to reflect as part of her e-portfolio. So it's part of her uh, e-portfolio. And uh, that uh, Cikgu Sazwan thing or the Cikgu Irma thing, it's one of, uh, is built, embedded in the test. So for example, question five, your task is to revisit the discussion we had with Cikgu Sazwan discuss three factors that he considered when integrating technology in the school is teaching and then identify one of the factors and describe how you would handle it if you were using similar technology to teach English in a school located in the area where you currently live. So I 
uh, we should try to bring context um, as much as possible into our students' assessment because that is one way, number one, they cannot meniru because they have, Shahila will have to talk about Pekan Pahang because she lives in Pekan. Another one will have to speak on about uh, Felda Ketengah, like I said. So then, then they, you have no, we do not have that issue of student um, plagiarizing or, you know, uh, collusion or whatever among the students. So it's very, uh, how do I say, it's very related to and relevant to their context. Okay, so, all right. Uh, ha, uh, Prof. Azida, one hour, insha'Allah. So my, my to summarize, uh, this is um how do I say this is just the insight saja, nothing uh, really new or that uh, new theory or whatever. But within a minimalist framework, we can actually combine. Uh, okay, what is this? Right, never mind. Uh, we can uh we somebody is asking never mind. Uh, we can actually uh, combine a self-directed learning activities with technology, but we always have to uh, consider the diversity of the learners. I tell you, in your ITM, they are so, so, so diverse. Uh, and the prior knowledge, sometimes we, we assume semua pandai buat video, not necessarily. Some of them uh, didn't have that, right? And we need to involve them. We need to engage them. The activities, the content assessment it has to be essential. Minimal lah. Uh, minimalist lah, bukan minimize. Eh? Flexibility and pace. And of course, the context. That's what we uh, we, uh, we, we did uh, so far, lah, insyaAllah, in the ITM. Okay, so I think uh, I click yes just now, so I couldn't go to the next. <laughs> what happened? No, let me move this. All right. Okay. So this is what I learned actually for the past one year. All right. I have just three things to teach. Uh, Lao Tzu said simplicity, patience, and compassion. So this is one comment from a student that actually really, really touched my, touched my heart. My. <laughs> For the first time, I feel like this. Maybe this is my challenge. But when we got problem, can you just please listen? And we can find the way. So, you know, it's kind of smoke in my eyes when students are saying that they're really needing us to understand. Of course, forget about those who are opportunists and you know, trying to escape a lot of things. But there are many students who really want to learn and who are still having difficulties in trying to connect to us through this online, open, distance learning, remote learning classroom. Right? So I hope you have benefited from that. <laughs> uh, I would say excellence is the gradual result of always striving to be better. I'm retiring this year, but I still find a lot of things that I need to learn. Uh, so. Let's go with this amana and have this passion and be inspired like your prof. Very inspiring, both of your professors, Prof Karim and Prof Azida. And you can learn a lot from them as well. So all the best from me. Uh, oh, thank you. Prof Azia is, <laughs> is here. All the best. Thank you. Uh, Insha'Allah. Um, banyak faedah untuk semua. Okay. Oh, yes. I have some up in it, uh, references if you like. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Nazia. Uh, actually, I learned a lot from this session. All right. So, uh, do we have questions from the participants? You can uh, switch on your, uh, you can unmute your mic to ask question if you like. Wow, I have so many uh, recipient of Anugrah Academic Negara <laughs> ni. Aduh, takut ni. <laughs> Any question? Just now I saw a question in the chat box. 
box. Let me just have a look. Um, I yeah, I, I thought I saw one. Yeah, from Vina just now. Where is it? Or oh, do you want to speak, Vina? You were asking about uh, turning on webcam. Yes, hi, and thank you to the speakers and to the AE. I was just actually. The students there, they'll turn on their camera, all of them. I find that it's, um, especially on online learning and interaction, it's really important. Tapi, most of the times, our students, a few only, two, three, three, four, that turn it on. So, I was wondering how they did it. Did he actually request all of them to do it? Um, any experience to share uh, from anyone also would be great. Thanks. Oh, okay. I think in that particular global learning session that uh, my lecturer had with Tom, we, we asked the students to turn it on because uh, we want them to, uh, we, we don't want the uh, Tom to be speaking to names like that, right? So they turn it on. Uh, Normally, like our meetings nowadays in UITM, we were asked to turn on the camera. Except we mute, but we turn on the camera. Because now people are seeking the presence. Can. Uh, so that's why it, it is important. But I, I'm okay with you people not turning on your video. That's okay. Don't worry. I'm okay. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> yes, um, um, I did the same thing for when I had a special speaker. I asked all my students to turn it on. They were willing to do it. And then when in class time, I do ask them for special sessions. You just turn on for 10, 15, 10 minutes or so because um, some of them, they take a kangan uh, bandwidth to yeah, get yeah. a camera yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but it, they are more engaged when it's on. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, the particular one that I showed you, um, Bachelor of Intercultural Communication, these are people, students who took uh, applied linguistic. Uh, they are, they, most of them are from Lembah, uh, from Kelang Valley. Uh, in, in our Bahasa, we say most of them are not orang beradu lah. They, they, they can, <laughs> they got very good English, uh, very refined way of speaking. And so that's why it's really, it's really interesting if you go into one of this global learning section that uh, my lecturer is having. No, now we have people from law as well doing that. I think many uh, lecturers in Malaysia are also doing that. You know, but to get that right person to be with the students, that's very important. So students can be really motivated to do more than what they they learn in class. If I don't, I can subscribe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I've been using Padlet since they, it's called Wall Wisher, so they don't charge me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... Just check uh, from Dr. Edmund. Uh... We are often, uh, sorry, we are often. Uh, paralyzed by too many choices of apps. Uh, um, all right. So, mm -hmm. how uh, how would you encourage us to explore? All right, because there are too many apps, uh, too many uh, methods, and so on. So, how do you encourage the academics to explore uh, the apps or methods? Or should we try to ask and see the feedback first? That oh, is a okay. question from uh, Dr. Edmund. Is that Dr. Edmund, the one who switched on the camera? <laughs> the uh, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, this is my my take on this. Lah. Uh, normally, I look at the three things. Uh, the content, the delivery, and the assessment. Most of the time, we use a lot of apps at the delivery part because we want to make our session interesting and so on, right? So what do the, we deliver? Uh, for that particular for maybe lesson, I need to teach concepts. So certain apps are better with concepts, certain apps are not. So that's how I explore. So I I will have my, my, how do I say, my kind of my plan first, then only I will uh, look at the app. But I have basic apps. Like for assessment, I use Socrative for so many years. 
That's why like I said Padlet, I've been using it since it was it was well we sure because I think it is very good in terms of uh, getting students. Now it's better in fact because you can export the 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 the, the chat, not the chat, the the input by the students and so on. And you can uh, export it as a PDF, it can become even a book, right? So I have basic apps for certain things like questioning basic app apa dia property for example as i go along i look at this now now we got zoom we got loom we got apa ya macam-macam we got a uh, zimbalu and zimbalu apa and so on so what i do is i click to explore and said oh is this better than the one i'm using now if it's better i will try okay like for example pale is quite good because you can break up break up you have can have breakout session so like way back time something like that right uh, but way back is not so much breakout session so you can you if you want to do that you want to have a, a, a session where you have breakout session you may want to use pale otherwise if you just want to give a one hour lecture and the students are familiar with web webex or google meet why, why change uh, that's my my take lah but there are many apps and your professors, uh, Prof. Karim lagi pandai pada saya lah when it comes to app ni. Saya banyak dah ketinggalan actually. <laughs> Prof. Azida pun um, lagi pandai pada saya. But the younger people, um, you know, near port lah. So they, 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 they banyak. They all have their advantages. They all have their attributes. But my, I always question whether it fits what I want to do for that particular lesson or for that particular group. So when I teach uh, visual arts, you know, I have to use something a little bit different from the Tesla students. Tesla students, they can read. They read. <laughs> you can tell them, go use, uh, go read an ebook. They can read. But you do that to visual arts student, I don't think they can read. <laughs> you cannot read ebook too long, <laughs> right? Okay. I hope I answered your question, doctor. Ah uh, yeah, thank you, Prof. All right. Please, please do. Okay, okay, uh, so um, yeah, I agree with Prof. Azia here yeah, because I, I, I think uh, when uh, I, I, I use uh, minimal uh, apps in my class, okay, not every app should be used uh, when, you know, uh, you, I think I stick to the apps that I like to use, you know, most beneficial to my students, then that's it. However, if I would like to know new apps, I will ask my students to explore. <laughs> Betul. Ah, because they are young generation and so on so no need for me to explore they will teach me how to use these apps and so on and you, you know that you give the task to your students okay? because we haven't got time now to explore so many apps and so on so let the students do the work mm, so any, any more questions from the participants Cuma komen satu je Terasa macam benar sangat dengan teknologi Bila Prof Azia bentang semua tadi Macam macam kecil Sangat sempurna tak tahu Aduh. Anyway terima kasih Prof Azia Apa really really teruk sangat rasa Terasa kerdil sangat Prof uh, Eh tak, tak ada tak ada Jangan rasa macam tu because uh, At the moment if you if you do powerpoint You can do a lot on powerpoint ah, Tak payah guna benda lain dah when it comes to content Seriously Prof, ha. PowerPoint tu dia dah tak mau, Prof. Dia nak lebih canggih lagi. Thank you kita pula yang tak canggih macam student. Tak apa, boleh save as video PowerPoint tu dah boleh buat cantik dah sebenarnya. Tak apa. I know, jangan rasa kecil. We all are learning. Okay, uh, there is a question here. Uh, what from Dr. Huzaimi? What do you think of students who are less fortunate? Um, uh, sorry, ya. Dia selalu je tertutup ni. Uh, okay. uh, what do you think about students who are less fortunate uh, because of their background, something like that. Lah, saya dah tak jumpa. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, uh, use that. Uh, what do you think of students who are less fortunate to actually use technology? Oh, okay. Uh, I have many in my university. So, uh, basically, how do how do i say this uh, i will we 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 we, we manage the, the bug lah. in the class of 40 there will be two or three who will be 
you will not have access, right? But you have to handle the 37. So uh, I will have the normal for, 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 for the, uh, the session and so on. But I always have personalized uh, uh, session with the other three. I know it will take time. It will take your time. You know, you will need to spend time. So I will set this uh, the, this person and say, do you manage to follow the the lesson just now? Uh, sometimes, for example, sorry, Prof, tadi electricity blackout, contoh lah. Eh? So, and then I will send her whatever that I uh, that I did, I did in the class and then make sure that she uh, she go through the task without having to you know um, attend the google meet session for the whole one hour or so so in my case i don't use very uh, sophisticated whatever uh, technology but because the course is on innovative technology they will have to know about the technology and if possible they have to use it so I, I have students who couldn't do that, lah, I know. So for example, uh, even the piston thing, uh, it's a very simple cartoon. You can use a lot of this cartoon very easy actually. But one of the students actually said, Prof, can I just draw um, mine? So the idea is for the students to use visual to reflect and tell us what he thinks or his ideas. So does he need to use Pixton or whatever other app? No. If he can draw, draw lah. So I accepted the drawing. So tak ada issue. You look at the outcome of what uh, of what you want the students to achieve. So uh, many lah. We ha I have students yang uh, apa ni climb tangki air. Uh, I have students yang duduk kat uh, dapur. Uh, ni dapur ni because that's the best place you boleh dapat wifi. So, bila dia ada kelas dia pergi duduk dekat dapur ni neighbor tu. That was, that's in Sarawak. So, many of that. So, we call the lecturers and we buat uh, session yang panjang-panjang. Make it short. Uh, but, students boleh access the ni, whatever that you are delivering. I hope I answer that question now. So, okay, so I'll from Prof Azizi, yeah? uh, how do you make your student fall in love with your with the lecture on ODL apart from smiling all the time? Hi, Prof Azizi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you? <laughs> number one, number one, you have to smile because the student student selalu tanya, "Are you okay, ke? I'm okay. Don't worry." Uh, but in my case, Prof Hadiji, it's easy for me because they feel like I'm their mark. They always feel that I'm their only mark. So uh, that is how I engage my students. Macam Prof Karim tu susah lah nak nampak dia sebabak kan. Muda lagi dia orang nampak. But in my case, the students feel uh, when when they talk to me, so they feel like I'm their only mark and they are like my anak. So it's easy. But... Uh, I think uh, we need to express, well, how do I say it, the uh, ikhlasan kita lah bila kita mengajar dia. I think all of you pun macam tu. You really want them to learn. So for example, in my class, I have 38 of them. Sometimes I went to each and every one of them. So I will ask, uh, Amira, uh, is everything okay? So another one I go, Saliza, how are things at home? I will do that, even though it will take some time. So after a while, I believe they, they feel like I'm mak dia lah, tengah jaga dia sementara. <laughs> I mengajar dia benda-benda lain. So that's one way lah. And I keep um, in contact lah. Yeah, after the session, I will um, WhatsApp or I, I use Telegram now. I will do it once or twice before the next class. Just, no, I don't give them extra class. I will just say how's everybody, uh, how's the weekend or something like that. So I stay connected. Even though it's busy, kan? Tapi they appreciate uh, that kind of thing. My students are only in semester two, so they are very young. I I hope I understand. I, I, I answer your question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ini geng mak mak aja ya. Ah, mak mak dia ada kelebihan. Betul. 
It's an advantage for us. We would like to, uh, to thank uh, Razia for the very, very um, insightful uh, sharing. As well as we have uh, many participants from outside SM, thank you very much. And I hope that everybody. Uh, I would like to thank you. Okay. Terima kasih, Prof. Zia. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Prof, for giving the opportunity to share. Yeah, terima kasih. Dekat yeah. YouTube, dekat YouTube ada Prof. Rosna, Prof. Rosahan, semua ada. Oh, ya ke? Haa, semua ada. Oh, really? Uh, uh, <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Prof. Anytime, but but cannot promise anything else. Terima kasih, Prof. One more. Prof. 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 Terima kasih. Uh, One terima more. kasih juga sendiri. Terima kasih. Which I can, uh, Prof. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. All right, assalamualaikum. Thank you. Have a good Thank you for spending time. Thank you, Prof. Thank you for Kena tukar you device okay. yo. Ala so. Selalu hang, selalu hang. Hai. Kita kena ambil yang dekat chat tu Prof banyak tu Twitter pasal